Hi, my name is Mylon Lefevre, and music is in my blood. I got my first big break when Elvis Presley recorded a song I'd written at 17 years old. I toured the world and played with some of the biggest names in music and almost died from a drug overdose. Something had to change. Everything did change when I gave my life to Jesus at a second chapter of Acts concert in 1980. Now, years later, my wife, Christy, and I travel the globe proclaiming God's goodness. So come on and join me on the road to freedom. Welcome to On the Road to Freedom, part two of my recent service in Clarksville, Tennessee, when I stepped into my new season. You know, just a week ago, these trees all around me were full of vivid color and beauty. Wouldn't it be nice if all the beautiful things in life stayed the same? But God said, to everything, there is a season. And when a season changes, an adjustment is always required. When my husband stepped into heaven, I felt like I'd been knocked to the ground, just like all these leaves you see lying around. And in today's broadcast, I share the quality decision I had to make in order to get back up. I had to do what Mylon and I have been teaching you for six years on this broadcast from John 8, 31 and 32. I had to choose to continue in the Word, for that is what makes us His disciples. And glory to God, He is revealing the truth to us that makes us free. I believe after you finish watching this teaching, you're going to get back up too from every oppression of the enemy, because in Christ, you are a born overcomer. Jesus said in John 14, 27 through 28, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives. Hallelujah for that. So let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. If you're facing a situation right now, again, a crisis, a turning point in your life where you've got to make a, de a decision. What I noticed is when my thoughts focused on loss, loss of this, loss of that with Mylon, immediately that path was a dark path that led to grief and sorrow. But when I shifted my mind to gain, because Paul said to die is gain, when I shifted my thoughts to gain, then again, I'm, now I'm at peace. Now, because why? He will keep in perfect peace him whose mind is stayed on thee, right? And so whatever you think about, whatever you meditate on, you will eventually become. The word says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So if you meditate on loss, if you meditate on the disappointment, then that's a dark path that's not gonna lead to anything productive for your future. But if you'll think on, the greater one lives in me. And greater is he who is in me than he that's in the world. If you'll think on the promises of God's word, immediately that situation or that level of peace and joy and contentment. Ooh, let me, I'm telling you, the word has opened up to me in a way that I have never seen before. You know, Paul, he said, for I have learned how to be content, satisfied to the point where I'm not disturbed or disquieted in whatever state I'm in. Whether I base or abound, whether I have or I have not. So whether I'm with Mylon or right now it's just a temporary, he's departed and, and we'll be joined together soon. Either way, I have learned how to be content. When Jesus hung on the cross, it looked like defeat, but he was in the perfect will of God. And three days later, we know what happened. Death, hallelujah, was swallowed up in victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
So, you know, I went to the Lord once I crossed that line and I said, I'm choosing life. I'm choosing to trust God. I said, well, Lord, what do I do now? Right? You may be thinking, what do I do now? Yeah. Well, I can tell you the choice that I've made is to preach the word, preach the word, preach the word. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Christy, I'm going to charge you with these words from the New Testament. Preach the word in season and out of season. That means when things are good, preach the Word. That means when things don't look good, preach the Word. That means when finances are up, preach the Word. When finances are down, preach the Word. In season, out of season, preach the Word. That's what makes Him tick. So now, in the name of the Lord Jesus, according to the Word of the living God, we lay our hands upon Christy, declaring before all men that Christy Jackson Lefebvre is anointed and ordained and separated unto the gospel ministry of Jesus of Nazareth, the anointed one of God. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. So the Lord reminded me that, and he said that initial call, it has not changed, Christy. Again, nothing has changed. So I want you to know I'm preaching the word. Now, again, how is, again, the strengthening of God? How do we do it in a time of crisis? Well, we walk by faith. We take those steps by faith. In Habakkuk 3.19, it says, The Lord God is my strength, my personal bravery. He is my invincible army. He makes my feet like hinds feet and will make me to walk, not stand still in terror, but to walk. There's that walk of faith and make spiritual progress upon my high places. Now here's how the Lord defines high places. My high places of trouble, suffering, and responsibility. Yes. Woo! Yes. To whom much is given, much is required. And we've got to keep pressing on towards the upward call in Christ Jesus. So this here, if we put our trust in Him, He's ready to cause you, to make you to walk. Right. To not stand still in terror and panic, but to walk and to actually make spiritual progress in the midst of that situation that would crumble and defeat others. That's right. He'll make you to walk. Yeah. He'll make you to have spiritual progress and be productive and fruitful in those high places. That means much is being required of you. And we could not do it. Again, this is not in ourselves. This isn't just because we think we're tough. That's right. This is in Him. He's my strength. And He enables me to walk in the midst of this and to make spiritual progress. Hallelujah. When Moses died, here's what God said to Joshua. Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise. That means get up and go. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. Now please, did you know that every place that the sole of your foot will tread again, I'm ready to give you the promised land, but you got to take the step, right? And they were about to face the giants, right? And he said, but I'm with you. You can do this. But he, here was the first part. In the midst of that oppressive situation, God said, okay, now get up. It's time to get up. Arise, Isaiah 60 says, arise from the depression and the prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Amen. 
Believe me, I have been on my face in the throne room for a long time without going into all of those details. So when God said this to me, Christy, arise from the depression and that prostration in which those circumstances have kept you, it's time for you to get up. And once you get up, now it's time for you to go. <laughs> That's why I'm here today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. You know, because Jeremiah 1 says, that was how God called me to full-time ministry with Jeremiah 1. Go to all to whom I send you and speak what I command you to speak. So again, every place that the sole of our foot treads I've, that he gives us, but we've got to keep taking those steps of faith to possess the promises, right? Yeah. Amen. Amen. But we can't move forward if we're looking back. Now, this was another thing I kept thinking about because, you know, those 25 years with Mylon were exceptional. They were heaven on earth. Yes, of course, we had to work through some things every marriage does. There was transitions and we, we became, that process of becoming one doesn't happen the day you say, I do. That pro, it's a process. It happens over time, right? And all of the married people say, <laughs> yes. But, you know, at the end of that 25 years, oh my goodness, it was the best we'd ever had. It was the best, best in our marriage, best in ministry, best everywhere you looked. Amen. And so that, that looking back for me was, was difficult because those were the best years that I had ever enjoyed were with my honey, right? With my beloved. Philippians 3, 12 through 15, it says, one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call in Christ Jesus. So therefore, let us as many as are mature, if you think you're spiritually mature, Paul's saying this is the mindset you should have at all times. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal it to you. He'll actually show you those areas where you're, you're still laying hold of the things that are behind and it's limiting you from pressing from your future yeah. in him. It's because, you know, I'm, so, I'm sure some of you may be thinking, well, my goodness, Christy, isn't it a little early for you to be stepping out? But again, this verse says, if you think you're spiritually mature, you need to choose to forget those things which are behind yeah. and reach forward to the things that are ahead. This is for grownups. Now, the reason why I say that is because Thanksgiving's this week. <laughs> and y'all all know about the kids' table, right? And I remember being at the kids' table and looking longingly. At, I'd love to be with the adults, right? Uh, for me, you know, that was just always something I wanted to be around and hear all the wisdom and the experience. And the, yes, I had fun with my, my cousins, but I was the oldest. So I always had to be the babysitter, right? Yeah. So um, I didn't want to be at the kids' table anymore. So remember, if you want to sit with the grown-ups, this is our call. <laughs> to forget those things that are behind and reach forward to the things that are ahead. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Do not earnestly remember the former things, nor, nor consider the things of old. Now, I want you to know, I always thought this had to do with, because Paul's in reference to his passage in Philippians, he's talking about the things that, his mistakes. I'm forgetting that, what's behind. But in Isaiah, God's talking about all the good stuff he did. He, he destroyed that army, the Egyptian army, to protect the children of Israel at the Red Sea. And he's saying here, but forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I'm going to do. <laughs> Isn't that good? Oh my goodness. And then he says in verse 19, behold. Now when you see that word behold, I want to remind you what this means. It means to set your vision your mind and your attention on what God's about to say, okay? Behold, I am doing a new thing. A new thing. 
Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it and know it? And will you not give heed to it? This implies action. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So I want to remind you, in order for us, according to this verse, whether you're thinking on things that were the good old days or the devil has you occupied with the mistakes you made, according to God, we do not earnestly remember those things anymore. We forget the past. Here's why. Because until we do that, we can't lay hold of what's ahead. Okay, because we can't, God's saying here, behold, set your vision, your mind, and your attention on the new thing. And when I keep my mindset there, I'm happy. I'm at peace. I'm full of hope. I'm full of vision and joy and dreams, dreams again. Oh my goodness. And I told the Lord, I said, Lord, if I'm going to laugh again, I need new dreams. I need new vision because, you know, all my dreams and vision were wrapped around him, around Mylon. And so if I'm going to laugh again, now why do I say that with the dreams? Because when the Lord turned our captivity, we were like those who dream. Then our mouths were filled with laughter and our tongues was singing. So I have asked him for those new dreams and those new vision, and he is doing it. And I'm laughing again. <laughs> I'm giggling again. Praise God. And he is turning my captivity. Remember I said today's a turning point? He's ready to turn your mourning into dancing. He's ready to turn your sorrow into joy. He's ready to turn your captivity. Those things that have bound you, if it's discouragement, depression, disappointment, yes. whatever has kept you bound, he's ready to turn. Yes. It's a, it, today is a turning point, yes. but again, he's not gonna make the decision for you. We make the decision, we step over the line, amen. Everybody wants to be loved. I don't know about you, but mm -hmm. I need to be loved. Everybody does. Everybody's looking for love. Yeah. And that's what this TV show is all about. Yeah. Nobody's going to change their life mm -hmm. unless they really get the revelation that God truly loves them. That's right. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in Him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. Amen. So you can help us share the love of Jesus around the world by joining Team Mylan. And you just go to mylan.org and click on Team Mylan today. So here is the decision I had to make. <laughs> it is time. I <laughs> mean, I mean, y'all already got it. Okay. Now, now, Mylon would probably think this is a little cheesy, but here's the idea I had. God spoke to me. It's time for you to get back in the ring and put your gloves back on. Amen. Now, why do I say that? Because this is a fight of faith. Paul said, fight the good fight, right? It's a good fight because if we don't quit and we keep taking those steps of faith, we keep crossing that line, right? We keep choosing life, then we win. We win every time. You may be seated, thank you. Amen. Now here's, um, here's what I wanna say. Why the gold? Because I did this intentionally. Job 23.10 says, but he knows where I'm going and when he tests me, I will come out as pure as gold. Amen. The testing of our faith is, is supposed to refine us just like it refines gold. 
It's supposed to take out those impurities and those inconsistencies, right? So that we come out stronger. God said, I will strengthen you and harden you to difficulty. So that's his end game. The testing of our faith is that we would be mature and complete, not lacking in anything, okay? So what this says is, what I've got to say again is, I've got a choice to make. Anytime I've got a fight in front of me, it's time to fight, right? The enemy would love this to take me out. But the devil is a liar. (laughs) Hallelujah. The devil is a liar. So, but I've got to choose again. God's not going to make that choice for me. He's not going to make the decision for me. So am I a widow or is the Lord my maker, my husband? Amen. Am I overcome with sorrow or am I an overcomer? Amen. Am I a victim or am I a victor? Woohoo. Okay. So those are the decisions. And when the punches keep coming, And believe me, they have kept coming. When the punches keep coming, when I get knocked down, will I arise? Or will I stay down for the count? Right? All of these. Now, when I'm I'm leaving this on because I wanted you to have a visual representation. All of us face this. These questions I'm asking you, each and every one of us face. Your situation may be different, but you've got to decide when those punches are coming, and you get knocked down. I'm telling you, when this happened, you know, Brother Hagen would talk about your, um, you think you're doing real good in faith. And then all of a sudden something comes up and your head is where your feet were, right? I mean, boom, you're knocked down. So when we get knocked down in those situations in life, will we arise? And this, what it says on these gloves when I got them, it says the word defy. And that word defy means to resist. So we know when we're submitted to God, we resist the devil. He will flee. Amen. We need to defy his devices, his devices to take us out of our call. What do I mean by that? Well, Paul talks about we're not to be ignorant of the devil's devices, right? So we need to defy that. Why? How? By resisting. With the, how do we do that? How did Jesus defy the enemy? It is written. It is written. We believe and therefore we speak. That is how we throw a punch. That is it. And so what I want to say here is, again, <laughs> when they make you low, you will say there is a lifting up. Amen. Amen. Whatever's born of God overcomes this world. This is the victory that overcomes even my faith, right? Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world, right? Okay, I am victorious in him. Now, I thought about playing some Rocky music, but I thought that was going a little too far. (laughs) Okay, and I'm in heels or I would run up and down the steps and yeah. But, okay. <laughs> so, anyway, so I want you to know, now again, let me say this, I am not a life coach. That's not what I'm trying to be here. This is not a cheerleading message, okay? Even though I was a cheerleader, Mylon loved that. He used to tease me about that. Go Indians. But um, this, I want you to know, the first time I put my gloves back on, tears were streaming down my face. I shared that with you. The first time God spoke to me, and you know, this was a special friend. She texted me and she said, it's good to see you got back in the ring, got back in the ring and you put your gloves back on, Christy. And so I just want to encourage you in this, just to remind you, it's time to get back in the ring. You are an overcomer. And it's how I overcame in every situation of life. When the doctor's diagnosis came last year, how I conquered the spirit of fear, everything, every victory that I've had with my own in the last 25 years involved and was completely dependent on faith. Faith is a choice. If you're taking notes, please write that down. Faith is a choice. 
Faith will cause us to say like Job in the midst of he lost everything. And he said, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know that my Redeemer lives. Praise God, he has redeemed me from sin. He has redeemed me from the curse of the law. He has redeemed me from grief and sorrow and depression and oppression. He has redeemed me. I know that my Redeemer lives. To say faith will cause us to say like David, again in the midst when he thought he lost it all. He said, I would have quit. I would have given up had I not expected to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Not in the sweet by and by. Right now, you need to be declaring, I expect to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. The goodness of God is His glory. Remember I told you our latter years will be more glorious, right? I expect to see the goodness of God more glory than I've ever seen or walked in before in the days ahead. In the land of the living. Praise God to say faith will cause us to say like my valiant warrior Mylon, nothing has changed. (laughs) God still has a good plan for my life. Faith will cause you to speak that. Praise God and will cause you to overcome. So I encourage you right now, put your gloves back on. Get back in the ring. Pass the test. Amen. And we're going to come out of this pure as gold. (laughs) Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I believe you got back in the ring and put your gloves back on. (laughs) Praise God. It's a good fight of faith because if we don't quit, we win. We always win in Him. So to keep your faith strong, please take advantage of the free resources that we have available at Mylan.org that our partners who we call Team Mylan, their faithful giving provided so you could freely receive the good news of the gospel. We're not trying to get something from you. We're trying to get the good news to you. And our free podcast enables you to get the good news on the go. Or our Church on the Run daily digital devotionals filmed on our Harley rides all over the country. And don't forget, you can get On the Road to Freedom on demand 24-7 at mylan.org and catch up on any episodes that you missed. Now, I need your help to close the show because Mylan and I said this together on 332 episodes. So are you ready? Stay in the Word because that will keep you, here we go, On On the the Road road to to freedom. Freedom.